again, for somebody who's having a hip replacement, as you described, and your approach mm. to the again, how active is their general thumb? How active can they be? So the, they, you know, yeah. so the good <laughs> news is, with, the good news is with hip replacements, unlike, as I was saying, with knee replacements, where a lot of people will be delighted with their knee replacement, but know that it's not their own knee replacement. Yeah. With hip replacements, we have a very high success rate in ending up with a patient who literally does not notice that they have an artificial hip joint. We talk about the, 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 the concept of a forgotten or a silent implant. So the patient does not think about the fact that their hip is artificial at all. Mm. And that's quite common with hips, unusual with knees, but quite common with, with, with all hip replacements, whether it's anterior approach or posterior approach. Uh, the, 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 the success rate for hip replacement surgery uh, in terms of patient satisfaction scores is very high. Um, so again, it comes back down to a patient's expectation. I would not put a barrier for my patients having a very sporty, active lifestyle. With a traditional uh, hip replacement technique like a posterior approach or a hardinge approach, I am worried about the quality of the tendons and muscle repair and the potential risk for dislocation mm. it doesn't seem to worry me you know if you have a hard if you'd have a, a, a an anterior approach hip replacement um you know a lot of patients get advised that after surgery for six weeks they have to sleep on their back they can't sleep on some, you know whichever is their hip replacement side none of that with anterior approach you, your patient can lie wherever they want to right. um there's no real restrictions i don't mind whether they want to um you know they don't need to have to uh, use a seat raiser on the toilet they don't need to be worried so much about you know a low chair um, which are traditionally worrisome for patients with uh, standard hip replacement surgery so so a lot of these early restrictions just don't seem to be relevant for anterior approach surgery but moving forward from that once patients are recovered and a lot of people are re fully recovered within six weeks to two months after surgery they will stroll into the clinic um, with no limp, with no pain, with a smile on their face and say, thank you very much, job done. Uh, and at that stage, I will say to my patients, with pleasure, go away and use your hip replacement as you wish to. Um, I'll, again, engage in conversation with them about the pros and cons of a more aggressive or active lifestyle, but it's up to them. Yeah. It's up to them to decide what they do.